up to now we've been talking about consumer decisions based on a single period, maybe cho choosing between two different products, but nonetheless doing it in, in uh, one day or one year, whatever. But a lot of different economics questions come up when people make decisions over time. And so want to introduce what's called the intertemporal budget constraint, which allows for us to look at the decisions of consumers to, uh, to buy stuff over uh, a period of time. And we'll be doing this with a, in a two period model to keep it uh, simple. So in period one and period two, and it's a budget constraint. So how much you consume depends at least in, uh, in, in large part on your preferences, but also your income today and tomorrow. And what you don't consume today, what you save today can influence what you're able to consume in the future. So uh, we'll get to these equations in, in just a moment, but I wanna first uh, introduce some notation. Uh, we're gonna think about just some, uh, a single good. We're not gonna allow them to choose between goods. It's just today and tomorrow. So we got C1 is the period one consumption. C2 is period two consumption. I1 is the income that, they, that the consumer gets in, in the first period today. You also potentially have income that you receive in the second period. And then we have the, the interest rate. Now, ultimately, we are going to have consumers needing to uh, satisfy this budget constraint over time. So we're not going to allow them to, uh, to die in debt, which is uh, you know, another, another issue of how to deal with uh, uh, situations like that. Instead, we're gonna, they're going to have to live within their means over the, over the two periods. Now, what, is that, what does that mean conceptually? It means that the discounted value of consumption over the two periods has to be equal to the discounted value of income. Your, cons your consumption today and your consumption tomorrow has to be financed by the income that you receive. Now, this equation up here, represented by star, is that idea. The left-hand side is the discounted value of consumption. So period one's consumption and period two's consumption discounted by the interest rate. Now we had another video about discount factors and how interest rates can, uh, can affect how you value consumption in the future. Have you uh, look back at that if you need uh, some, a reminder. And then we're gonna have this income in period one plus the discounted value of income in the future. Now, so, Again, discounted consumption on the left, discounted uh, interest income, uh, discounted income on the right-hand side. Now, ultimately, what we want to do is to graph this relationship, and there'll be some very useful things that we can do once we uh, uh, look at that budget constraint. And we'll have a sense of the relative price of consuming today versus tomorrow, very much like uh, the uh, one period uh, budget constraint. But in this uh, equation uh, one, I have rewritten this top equation, isolating C2. Because I want to, I'm going to, again, graph it. I want to put it in a form that's easy to uh, depict on, a, on a, simple, a simple graph. So I've isolated C2, and what we have here is that uh, your consumption tomorrow depends on um, this plus this plus that. Now I want to rewrite that a little bit. So I've, I've got just a little algebra to get uh, equation one. And I'm going to rearrange equation one in the following way on equation two, which is, a, a, I think, a very, um, uh, it's very intuitive, at least for me. So what we have here is period one's income minus the consumption in good one. That's basically savings, okay? What I can consume in period two, actually, let me start with, uh, with the right-hand side, or the, the furthest over here. Your consumption in period two depends in part on the income that you get in that period. 
Okay, that's fair enough. But you also have the potential to save and get income from those savings. And that's this part. The income in uh, period one minus what you consume. So this is savings. You can save that and you get one plus the interest rate. You'll have that as another source of income in the second period left over from the first period. Okay? So this is, I think, all can be very intuitive if you think about what the, uh, what the symbols mean. Now, let's, I'm going to actually use equation one to graph. Um, so what I've got here is I'm going to put C1 on the, the horizontal axis, and I'm going to put C2 on the uh, vertical axis. And I'm going to say, well, what, what's the maximum amount of consumption I could get in period two if I didn't consume anything today? So looking at this equation, if, if C1 is zero, that makes this disappear. So what I would get, the maximum amount of consumption in period two, it's whatever my income is, plus the interest income from all of that income that I didn't use to buy stuff in the first period. So this is one plus R times, actually, let me do this slightly differently. Okay, so point A is going to be one plus R times I1 plus I2, okay? Now, what's the maximum amount of C1 that I could consume? If I didn't, didn't consume anything in the future, I you know, partied today. Well, we can go back up to this original equation and get that. If C2 is equal to zero, what we have is point B. That's going to be equal to whatever I get in the first period plus I discount the value of my income in the second period and, and use it to buy stuff today because I know I'm going to be able to get the income in the second period. So that's the maximum. Now, you probably aren't going to choose either to only consume today or only consume uh, tomorrow. It's probably going to be something in between. Now, what is the, um, what is this, this uh, so I'm going to connect these dots and I've got a budget constraint. Now the question is, what's the slope of that line? What is the relative price of C, uh, uh, period one consumption? It's going to be this. The slope of this intertemporal budget constraint is minus one plus R. Every time uh, I give up uh, consumption, if I reduce consumption of C2 by one, I'll be able to get more consumption in the first, uh, in the first period. Okay, so here's this budget constraint. Now let's think about how various things would change this um, uh, this this relationship. Okay, so for example, if I were to get if my income today were to go up, how would that affect things? Well, you're going. Uh, how would it? Let's first look at uh, that intercept. If income goes up in that first period, you'll be able to consume more C1, okay? Um, just a, a direct 
increase in your consumption of, of that, that big uh, increases by that uh, amount. How does it affect A? Well, it's going to be 1 plus R times the income. Uh, and we'll uh, uh, shift up the, the amount that you can consume in period uh, two as well. Okay, so let's have that increase. Okay, so again, B is going to increase by this. It goes out here. How much could you uh, extra uh, consumption C1 could you get? It's going to be 1 plus R times the income. It's going to shift out more. So you can play with this budget constraint in a, in a number of, uh, of different ways. You can look at, for example, how uh, the interest rate would uh, uh, change. It would, the uh, interest rate changing would change the slope, but it would also affect these, the intercepts. So you have this trade-off between the two potentially changing as both your income today changes, your income tomorrow changes, which I didn't do, plus the interest rates. And that is going to affect how you, um, uh, what kind of limitations that you might have on your consumption over time if you were taking uh, into account income today and income tomorrow, consumption today and consumption tomorrow. Okay, so this is a brief introduction to that inter intertemporal budget constraint, which is used in a, a many different uh, applications.